Okay, good evening. This is John Presco coming to you live from Springfield, Oregon. I was just watching the last part of the, the Tony Awards. Boy, they had a commemoration for all the, the people that had died, that have contributed to this uh, wonderful mode of entertainment, you know, musicals, plays, and uh, we don't live forever. Yike. And I guess that's why I'm making these, these tapes here, because I have no contact with my daughter. I'm not uh, in her life, and I never really was. Uh, this is about well, everything's been about Patrice Hansen since I met her. All about her. Everything. All about her. She was destined for greatness, and achievement, and, uh, you know, be fame. You know, she could have been anything. An artist, an actress, a scientist, an astronaut, and all these wonderful things that Patrice Hansen could have been. But she had a very abusive father and really screwed her up. And uh, so who was going to fix that? You know, make that right. And, you know, end this great wound of the, uh, the mother, the wounded hippie mother who's going to wave her magic wand and I heal thy mother, mother be healed. Well, you know, my five-year-old daughter. See, that's who was assigned this impossible task. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just amazes me. See, see, this would be a great Broadway play or musical. I've been saying it. Uh, the, the Wicked's coming to town, you know, about the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy. Well, well this is, you know, this is version of Sleeping Beauty. It's a the classic tale where the you know the king's daughter is uh, put out in the woods by the, the evil uh, sister of the king and because she's a, a jealous of the newborn daughter and she's raised by wolves. Right? And and uh, but the wolves die out and this evil witch comes along and takes the daughter into her dark castle. Okay, perfect. They're, they're, this is your musical. This is, I could, you know, write another Grimm's fairy tale sequel to this. You know, Sleeping Beauty was, was uh, named Rosemont. So, uh, yeah, I've got strange lighting in here. So, uh, yeah, you know, I kind of suggested things like this. What I really did was uh, I went down to uh, Santa Rosa to visit my daughter for the first, second time. I brought Lawrence uh, Gardner's book, you know, The Holy Bloodline of the Holy Grail. And I showed it to my daughter and her mother. I said, this is kind of what the book I'm working on. For a couple of years, I belonged to these groups that study the Mary Magdalene being the possible wife of, of uh, Jesus. And, you know, and they go, ew, no, that's not what we had in mind. You know, you, you have your chore to perform for us, don't you? This is your job to introduce us to uh, famous people and get a, a contract for uh, my daughter? You know, is that your job? What are, you, what are you talking about this book about the bloodline of the Holy Grail, the Stewart family? Huh? What are you trying to lay on us? You trying to cheat us out of our destiny? <laughs> no kidding. I mean, you, you know, yeah, and you try to overlook it because you think You've got a role in this, in these women's, you know, this 
child of 16 and her mother, you have a role, see. You, you get to actually play after not being able to play for 16 years. You know, you got to speak in part, you know. Well, not really, because, you know, all the spotlight has to fall upon the mother, the mother of light, the mother of holy goodness, the acid halo of the acid queen of Berkeley will have her day. <laughs> no, come on, I can do the whole musical. You know, I should have been a, an actor. I finally realized it, that, 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 that uh, I missed my mark. I was giving it all away free at the bar, entertaining people, you know, great expense to myself. Let me close the door here before I get an audience. You know, I get another torch. My door. You ought to be locked up. You're a lunatic. <laughs> See, that's all part, you know, this could all be made into a, a, you know, a Broadway musical. You know, that means I got to take time for my other writing projects and sit down and send it out and send it out. Nobody knows me. I get reject notice. You know, how long is that going to take? Three years? Well, I'll be dead in three years. Yeah, I chose to be, you know, a newspaper person. And I should have. Uh, I saw Patrice poo pooing my idea for, for uh, Lawrence Gardner type of thing. Novel, see, the Vinci Code's four years, three years away. One of the best, biggest sellers of all time. He, they just ripped off Lawrence Gardner and, and uh, Badge and Lay. You know, they just turned it, rather than going for the facts and being the facts good, I said, so I'll just turn this into a story, historic fantasy. And I'll make it seem like it's history, but it's fantasy, so I don't gotta prove anything. Well, if <laughs> they ate that book up and people are looking at it, yeah, this is true, there are facts here. They went and saw the movie three times, there must be truth and facts here. So meanwhile, I don't got a book out and I'm stuck. I'm stuck in the drama of Patrice Hansen. You know, her destiny has to be fulfilled. And uh but, you know, she was telling me and, and my daughter, who didn't look like she was buying it, but what she was telling me as she comes back into my life, uh, you know, she's got to explain some stuff, and the best thing to do is just lie, tell one lie after another, because they got the goal, see. The goal is to get to the Rosamond, get to dead Rosamond, dead Rosamond, get to her and the people around her, my daughter. And you will have success beyond your dreams. <laughs> you will power and your mother will rise up in the social level to, and, and, and rub shoulders with the famous. It's about the mother, not about the daughter. The daughter is just the foot in the door, see? The mother, her grand entry to the Rosamund Gallery. Dun, 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 right? It's Patrice. The, the daughters come in, you know, right? This is uh, Christine Rosamond's niece. People go, my family were there. They go, what, what do you mean? She's uh, Rosamond's niece. Who, who is she? Oh. I thought you had a brother named Craig. Yeah, we do. His daughter? I mean, he never told us my daughter. Oh, well, I've talked to him before. And my mother, my dead mother, uh, uh, who jumped off a cliff, committed suicide, had been in out of uh, uh, the nut ward, uh, you know, came to me as an angel and introduced uh, John and my daughter. See? He says it was his angel, but, you know, that's impossible. The guy was a loser. He was a loser, a drunk, a nobody. He was going nowhere. His life had amounted to anything. You know, I'm ashamed that, that 
his seed got in my divine belly of the Holy Grail Mother. See, the shine, the light coming down, you know. And, and I'd watch this. We went out for karaoke the first time I met her. There's the mother, oh, my daughter, isn't she so gifted? Oh, look at her. Oh, look at the drunks, you know, coming up and giving her a big hug after she sang the song. I'm going, yeah, I don't think I want alcoholics uh, hugging my daughter in a bar. You know, why am I here? See? You know, my first song. <laughs> you know, she came back, she went and got a guitar and played the guitar and sang a song. It was an audition. It wasn't any, you know, sit down and, you know, hey, hey, Dad, so you're my father, huh? You know, I've heard a lot of bad things about you. <laughs> really? You know? Do you want to know the truth or, or, or what? Or, you know, what, you know, do you, you know, want to get to know each other and know my side of the story about what happened? Yeah, why not? Yeah, got nothing to do. Let's shoot the shit for a couple of years, right? I didn't get that. See, I didn't get a bright, you know, sassy, uh, young 16-year-old daughter. You know, I got Heather Hansen on guitar and and singing a song because she's going to be a famous country western singer. You know, that it hasn't happened already is because she didn't hook up with Rosamond right after she was born. That was her destiny that her father kept her away from. See, that was the plan all along. That's the only reason that the goddess put, put me and John together in, in his father's favorite bar, the Piedmont Avenue, which I forget the name of. The, the carry house. Yeah, we met at the carry house, okay? You know? And, see, I didn't know I was destined to meet Rosamond in my lifetime. But something led me to go to the carry house that night. And I saw this old stumble bum, you know, this kind of goofy kind of guy, and, you know, and, and he's going, hey, hey, I'm your lady, Rosamond. Hey, 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 look at me, I'm your Rosamond's brother. And I go, oh, my God, how embarrassing, you know. And, you know okay, you who is your sister anyway? So he seduced me with their, his sister's name and took me home and we made love. And, 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 and then he threw me out of the house. He, you know, he agreed to take care of me and my two wounded, battered sons. But then he got tired of it. He wanted to go back and have some drinks with his friends. That's what happened to him. That's what kind of person. Heather's father was, but he was really her father. He was just the conduit for the sperm, the tube from hell. See, that the Holy Spirit of my dead mother guided his, his sperm through the shaft and rod of disgrace into my womb. He came and laid his seed. You know, and I just couldn't handle that, him doing that to me. But, you know, I was with a blessed child. Soon, it was Christmas Day that the, that Heather was, was conceived. I felt that there were lights around me. There were lights around John's bedroom. He put Christmas tree lights up. And, and now I was with child, only child. And I knew I was on my way to meet Rosemont. <laughs> I mean, I should be laughing. This is like the worst thing that could ever happen to you, human being, a male. Absolutely the worst thing. You could, you know, if you were to design this, see, like in a book or a play or, you know, musical, whatever, you know, Don Juan in Hell, I mean, this Bernard Shaw, whatever, who all these people would say, you know, let's, let's invent a really, really cruel way to destroy a man. Let's, let's, how will we do this? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, how would we do this? Never, we, never, we really don't 
shock it to it. Let me give it to it. Okay. This is it. Okay. You know, the, you know, <laughs> See, what was supposed to happen is Christine and I had, you know, were, had a fight and we're supposed to make amends. But I didn't realize how the rest of my family really were overjoyed that our great bond was over and they worked it. See, they put wedges in there, <laughs> driving the wedges in between me and Christine, you know, and, and, and you know, they knew I was her teacher. She knew she idolized me. She, you know, she walked in my footsteps. I mean, she just totally admired me. And they had their, you know, drive wedges in that. You know, I was trying to make overtures, you know, you know to my family that, hey, we're going to bury the axe here, you know. Oh, yeah, I told her. You, you, you said you're sorry. I did. I told her that. Well, no, they did. Okay. See, that's the play. See, you know, the mask. Sorrowful face and uh, <laughs> you know the human comedy of it all <laughs> you see the tortured path pathetic father who never wanted a child I thought I never would have one see I thought I was going to go to India become enlightened when I was 20 and uh, it's never occurred to me that, that I would have a child and what you know I was, I was like Jesus you know, what does that sound like? Well, it sounds like Lawrence Gardner, that line the Holy Grail. So, you know, in, in these books that came out, what was the, you know, Mary Magdalene of Jesus had a child. And the child's name was Sarah. You know, okay, well, you know, so I already knew that some of this resembled, you know, my life, and I, you know, I looked at my genome. And stuff. So there I am with a daughter, and her mother told her that if you ever want to fight, she put a found a print of Christine's, you know, Rosamond's, put it up above her my daughter's bed when she was in the crib, like one years old. She says, "If you if if you ever want to fight, Rosamond." Remember this thing. If you want to find your father's famous sister, remember this thing. See, she turned that around to, you know, if you ever want to find your father, you know, find him through his sister, Christine. She didn't want to run into me. She didn't want to see me. The, the, you know, the whole drama that she had was to get to my sister without me knowing it. See, that was, you know, get my daughter next to Christine without me knowing it. That was the drama that went on for years and years as this child grew up. You know, she knew if she came to me and said, listen, you know, we've got a one-year-old daughter. Uh, Randy just has left me. And, you know, will, will you accept your daughter? I said, sure. You know, that's what I would have said. Oh, yeah, come on. You know, but then she'd be at a disadvantage. See, her movie basically would be over because of the rotten shit she did to me. But, you know, I'd have to pretend she didn't. And there she'd be watching, me holding my one, two-year-old daughter going off and playing and being happy. You know, and, and, and guess what? I call up Christine and say, hey, let's end this. Uh, falling out, we had. I got, I got a baby daughter. Yeah, she's one years old. You want to meet her? Yeah, come on down. Oh, you, you're going to pay for our flight? Okay. Well, uh, that's three of us. You know, who, what? You, you don't want the mother down there? You just want to enjoy uh, your brother's child, uh, the three of us? You don't want the mother? Sure, okay. Hey, Patrice, is that okay that you don't go down and meet my sister? Yeah, yeah, it's all about you, John. Not about me. It never was. So uh, when Heather went into the gallery, 
she's being introduced as Christine's niece. And my family says, well, don't you think you ought to tell uh, our brother that uh, he's got a child? He's a father? Don't you think you ought to do that? Because uh, you'd be awful upset if we knew and we you know, didn't tell him. So why don't you do it? Or else, you know, he's about ready to contribute to Tom Snyder's book. We're taught we're in negotiation. If he finds out that, that we're wooing his daughter from him, <laughs> luring her into Tom Snyder's book, well, you know, he'll go off on another, you know, board path. And my gosh, we barely survived the last one, you know. Yeah, so, you know, there's Patrice. Well, can't you just write about me? And, you know, you we know, don't need to really mention Heather to later on, right? After she becomes famous, you, she really don't, won't have to be in Tom Snyder's book. Just, just write about me, okay? Well, don't you want us to write about your relationship with our brother? Oh no! You oh no! He he's nobody. I'm somebody. I'm the person that somebody. Look it. Can you see my LSD halo? What a nut! What a monster! Whew. So Dan Brown comes out with his book, bestseller. A lot of people had books not ready to be published. I knew some of these authors that did come out with books, but they were duds. I have to have to, you know, Dan Brown, the Da Vinci Code. None of these uh, other books were, were selling. It was over. And uh, Patrice has uh, taken my daughter and hit her again. She went to Vicky behind my back. I wasn't invited to the, my daughter's graduation because Heather is destined to be a winner. This is a fact. And if I just got behind her career, that moment she auditioned for me, I should have said, you know, after I've heard your daughter, I had ambitions. I was going to be a writer. You know, I, but I was selfish. I should just give all that up and concentrate on you. Now, what do you want? What, do you, what doors can you, I open for you? Yes, would you like to meet Stacy Perot? I, you know, yes, she, she knows a lot of country western uh, managers and stars, and they'll, they'll just hug you to their bosom. You know, I go, you know, would, you, would you like to sing it to Hollywood Bowl, little girl? I can get you in Hollywood Bowl. And you, you you promised me you could sing, because I, I, you know, I'll just sign the contract right here, and you're, you're at the Hollywood Bowl. Yay. Yay. Oh, thank you, Mommy. Thank you for, for promoting my career. Oh, I love you so much. Yeah. Oh, what about me? Oh, Yoo-hoo. Remember me? Oh, are you still here? Yeah. This is, this is, see, I didn't, I didn't get this. See, this, you know, am I acting frivolous now? You know, I, I don't care. You know, did it hurt me at all? No, no, it crushed me. All but destroyed me. Literally all but destroyed me. Did they care? No. Not a bit. Because I owed it to them, see. See. See, Patrice was always met to know Rosa. Do, 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 do. Here she is going down the path of life. Do, 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 do. Oh, I know you. You're the famous Rose Rosa. And I know you. You're the beautiful Patrice of the field, the holy one of the LSD experiment in Berkeley, aren't you? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Whatever happened in between <laughs> didn't happen. So he's wiped out, you know. I mean, I mean, this is biblical. You know, I, I spent so much time in the Bible reading how people get wiped out, but they don't really wipe them out because it's against, you know, God says, don't add or distract from this book. 
Well, they can really shrink you like a freeze-dried coffee, see? And you just get a little tiny mention there, you know? And it, to me, these are like stepping stones. But the smaller the, the citation, the more I just blow it up, you know? I say, wow, look, you know, let's get on this one. It's a clue, right? If you've been marginalized and minimalized in the Bible, you've done something extremely important. And, and this is how I operated. This is how I became a pretty good biblical scholar. So this whole thing with, with Ed Ray and the revolution of uh, uh, I don't know, Che Guevara, was it Che for, you know, Caesar saw che, saw that Chavez or whatever, you know the Indians, the poor Indians, and the and the, you know the old black woman, and the, you know, what people weren't under. Or, all see all that is biblical stuff because Jesse Benton Fremont is of the Stuart line. She's of the Holy Grail line. Now, whether that's true or real doesn't matter. See, it's already made good nonfiction. It's already made a good movie with follow-ups. See, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I can turn this, I can say, into a musical. See, and it would be a good musical with a happy ending. And that's what I could get Heather and her mother to understand. Well. They, you know, they didn't want to see it. I said, "Look, you know, you know, have you read Christine's book? It's really a terrible book. It really denigrates her family." No, I didn't read it, Daddy. Really, really, after fifteen years putting me through hell, you haven't read the rival biography that your mother took you away for me to be in, so she could have what a sentence. About her? She didn't know Christine. You know, she was only around me for two months, but, oh, you know, she's got Christine's niece. That's the big story. I get it now. Christine's niece coming soon to your motion picture screen. Chris Rosamond's niece. The giant bestseller of all time. <laughs> See, this is what was going on when she went back to Randy Del Piano after she told me if she's thinking about going back to him. See, she didn't tell it to my daughter. She, she said, no, your, your father wanted to get drunk with his friends some more. And he threw us out. You know, I told him, you know, that, that he was... I was pregnant with a child. I said, I don't care. Get the fuck out of my life, woman. I want to go drink with my friends. You got it? Yeah? Here, let me scratch my balls and my armpit. Mm, boy, I can't wait till you get out of my life. Take my unborn daughter with you. See? That, that's how I depict it, see? By the liar. The liar. See, that's the movie I would make, right? The liar, you know, like Ben Hur, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> These block lettering, ancient, you know, block stones, the liar. Yeah. He kidnaps them. Literally, you know, through the womb transfers, you know, the, you know, the daughter of a, a nice guy that tried to save her and, and, and her two sons. See. No good deed will go unpunished. See, that'll be the, you know, the, the preview underneath, you know, the liar. No good deed will go unpunished. Coming soon to your movie theater, you know. Now, the problem with that is that uh, you're going to lose half your audience. See, or, you know, half the people, most of the people that read books are women. And most people who go to movies, you know, are, are women. So they don't want to... See the liar, you know, about a woman who, who literally can't accept any reality at any level. And she uses this 
unborn child to get to to stalk a famous world famous artist literally use this child as a, a, a dream catcher she was the belly swelled and the baby was born and there's Randy Del Piano holding she's only plot there's only one ending for this movie that, that Patrice has, has uh, invented I mean she's literally wrote the script and signed everybody role. We, we tried to be ourselves and she wouldn't let us. She, you, know, you know, I mean, she really, really loved to take the, you know, to disempower and castrate male, males. So this came from her revenge on her father. I mean, she had me and Randy Del Piano like, you know, you know, running around with chickens with her head cut off and her penis too. You know, strings of blood coming out of her penis. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> and she, in her mind, in her deluded, sick mind, she believed that she deserved to be with my dead sister, where she was living. She believed that she deserved to be with my sister more than I did. See, that's what she worked out in her mind in that walk-in closet. When she found out that, that uh, she and I had a falling out, see, that she was a world-famous artist, she wanted to meet her, right? And that's what stuck. See, that became her movie. That became her sole ambition. You know, I mean, she's loaded. You know, you know let's, let's load up the stalker. Let's put the enema of fame up her ass. You know, wind her up. We're gonna wind this bitch up, but good to name it at a fool, at a, a famous person. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. The Legion of Stalkers are coming to your movie theater. Y'all be safe out there. Yeah. Forget about the holy blood, holy crap.